In the spirit of the guilty feminist, Deborah Francis White, my name is Christine and I am the guilty climate activist. I'm a climate activist, but my family has two cars and we use them every day. I'm a climate activist, but we moved house six months ago and we still don't have a functioning compost. I'm a climate activist, but I have four children and I work full time. So I face a constant choice about how to spend the very limited spare time I have. Each day I struggle with finding a balance between trying to be a good parent to my kids in the here and now and spending my time fighting for their future by trying to do my bit to save the planet. The thing is, the reason I feel guilty is that I live in a society that tells me that it's these personal choices that are going to save or not save the climate. And that's just not true. In 2017, the Carbon Majors report told us that 100 companies produce 70% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. It's these 100 companies and the governments that police them that we should be focusing on. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't use public transport and reduce our use of plastic and compost our food waste. We should. We should all make as many climate-informed lifestyle choices as we can. But these lifestyle choices alone are not enough to save the climate. And we have to be really careful not to shame those people who aren't able to make more climate-informed personal choices because they're worried about how they're going to pay their bills and how they're going to feed their children when they no longer have a job. So what can we do? All of us, but particularly those with limited disposable income and limited spare time because of work and family commitments. Well, Dr. Margaret Klein Salomon has spent the last five years studying the psychological state that is emergency mode. Emergency mode is characterized by an extreme focus of attention and resources on working productively to solve the emergency. And that's where we need to be now to solve the climate crisis. One of the big things everyday people can do to help lead society into emergency mode is have conversations every day about the climate crisis and the reality of what will happen to our planet if we don't make significant changes now. Conversations at work, at childcare drop-off, at school, conversations with those we love and kind, respectful conversations with those we don't even like. Research shows that despite being concerned about it, most people don't talk to anyone about climate change. Why? Well, probably because it's awkward, it's uncomfortable. These conversations will feel uncomfortable and might even feel socially inappropriate at times, but they're too important now not to have, and they don't take any extra time or money. So, although I still don't yet have a functioning compost, last week I had a half hour conversation with a climate skeptic. I had to use absolutely all of my self-control to keep engaging and keep my temper in check. But that half hour, that was climate activism. The week before that, I had an appointment with my physiotherapist who told me that he thought that the government would sort out the climate crisis. That next half hour, where I explained to him all the research that suggests that that is not, unfortunately, the case, that was climate activism. From here on in, I pledge to no longer be the guilty climate activist. I will make climate-aligned personal choices where I can within the constraints of my life. But I will focus my activism on leading society into emergency mode so that the 100 companies that produce 70% of our emissions and the governments that police them take assertive action now. Don't get guilty, get active. <laughs>